Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my kitchen. Today I have another meal prep video and oh my goodness, I have a lot planned for this video. We're packing a lot of recipes into one video and I just was really out of a lot of things. So I decided I'm gonna go ahead and plan a whole day and probably into the night and just get a bunch of stuff packed into the freezer. In case you guys didn't know, in the description box is the recipes. It's also where you can jump from one recipe to another and there is links there for you to pin each recipe so if there's a specific recipe that you like out of this video you can organize it on your pinterest board and it's easy for you to find it again if you're new here don't forget to hit that subscribe button i'd love if you joined my channel for all the meal prep inspiration and new recipes that i come up with every single week all right so i'm gonna quit rambling and let's get cooking Okay, the first recipe is a avocado chicken salad. And obviously this is not one for the freezer, but it was something that I wanted to have around for the week. So I made a big batch of it. I will leave the instructions and the ingredient list below, but it's just handy to have to pull out for lunches and just keep in the refrigerator. One little tip I'll give you for this chicken salad is I recommend storing it in a Ziploc bag in your refrigerator because whenever avocado comes in contact with air, it generally tends to turn brown. But if you put it in a Ziploc bag and squeeze all of the air out of it and seal it, it will not turn brown as quickly. You can use whatever mayo you'd like. I actually was almost out of my Primal Kitchen mayo, which is my first pick. I just love the ingredients that are in it. So I mixed it together with regular mayo and the taste actually came out super delicious. Next, I got started in on some taco soup. So you'll want two pounds of ground beef. And this is something you could also make in your pressure cooker if you're somebody that likes to use your Instapot. It would be super simple to make in there as well. And um, another thing is too, is you could pair this up with some other toppings fresh whenever you heat it up. So you could add in some croutons or some of the Parmesan cheese or cheddar cheese crisp. They would be delicious on this as well if you're trying to stay low carb. But one thing I love about this is it does have high protein because I used bone broth protein instead of beef broth. Now you could just use regular beef broth. I have that as an option in the ingredients list, but I went ahead and added in my favorite and this actually has some turmeric in it. I will link it below cause you can get it off Amazon. Last I checked and it really amped up the protein in each serving of this soup.
Once the soup had simmered for a while and the flavors were well combined, I opted to actually put them in containers that would be individual serving sizes so I can pull them out for lunches or just a really quick meal or I could pull two of them out if I'm doing them for both me and my daughters. Either way, I love this size. I think it's a two cup size container that can go into the freezer and then also into the microwave. The next thing I prepped was something extremely simple, but I thought I would just throw the idea in here. So I have a teriyaki marinade. I will link this below because it's a great option if you're somebody that needs low carb or sugar free, but you could use a regular teriyaki marinade. I put the chicken tenders into a bag and dumped the marinade in and then just put them on a cookie sheet and threw them in the oven. I love having pre-made chicken for a quick lunch and it's just a no-brainer to have in your freezer. Next, I went ahead and prepped some meatballs. This is kind of my go-to recipe. I've actually shared this before, but I haven't shared the ingredient list and the instructions in the description box. So I definitely wanted to include that this week. And this version is one that you are going to freeze raw in the pan and then pull out and warm up. I know that some of my meals I bake before um, I freeze them and some of them I just put in the oven after I've prepared them and then bake them at when I'm ready to serve them. This is such a delicious, delicious meatball recipe. It's super simple. And again, this barbecue sauce is one of my favorites and I will go ahead and link it below. If you guys have watched my channel for a long time, then this recipe is probably familiar to you and you maybe even have made it. So it's a really healthy chicken cordon bleu recipe. It's so simple and it's really one of my absolute favorite recipes. Um, one thing I did want to make a note about because I always like to give you guys multiple options and different ways you can make things depending on your eating style and whatnot. But the almond flour that's in this recipe, you can easily swap out for breadcrumbs. So you just want a nice like crumbly texture to kind of give your outside of your chicken a nice crunch.
So you could totally take this recipe and put it in a 9 by 13 pan, but I decided to go ahead and put it into two smaller pans just because that's the serving size I would need whenever I pulled them out of the oven. And then this one I did pre-bake, so all I have to do is pull it out in the morning, let it thaw, and then when I'm ready to eat it, I can just put it in the oven and heat it through and then my meal is ready to go. Next, we were in definite need of some breakfast burritos, and I think this is probably the simplest version of these I've ever done, but they definitely resemble the type that would be at a fast food restaurant or something like that. So I did some maple bacon, a little bit of salsa, and then some cheese, and just got everything prepped and fried up for that. One of the keys to making these burritos really delicious is that you throw those hot eggs in with the cheese and everything because it causes the cheese to melt into everything as you stir it up. And then whenever you reheat these, they're really good. All of the flavors are already combined and the cheese has already kind of been pre-melted to some degree. And I always get questions about how to reheat things. So you could do these in the microwave, the air fryer, or the oven. Because I like to swap back and forth between sweet and savory breakfasts, I went ahead and made some oatmeal waffles up. This recipe is super simple. And one thing that you will need is a blender or even a hand blender. That's actually what I had used to blend up the oatmeal just to give the pancakes a little bit of a smoother consistency. And basically you dump everything together and butter your pan and fry them up. Another tip about waffles and pancakes, which I think I've talked about before, is just that you want to flash freeze them flat first. So that just means that you will lay them flat on a cookie sheet or something like that, put them into the freezer, let them harden, get frozen, and then put them in a Ziploc bag. Because if you don't and you put all of your waffles or pancakes in one big Ziploc bag, they will freeze together in one big lump. And unless you plan to heat all the waffles or pancakes that you've made <laughs> is definitely not convenient. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I hope that this video inspired you. If you're new here, I'd love it if you subscribe to my channel for a lot more recipes, a lot more meal inspiration and ways to meal plan. Also, don't forget that you can pin all of my recipes. The links for that is below. You can follow me on Pinterest as well to see my recipes pop up. And don't forget to give this video a like and I'll see you guys in my next video. Mm -hmm.